how to prepare your credit for buying a house. So today I'm gonna to cover the three big keys of credit and what to do in order to make sure that when I, the lender, pull the, your credit, you're putting your best foot forward. Okay. Number one, on-time payments. Are you paying your bills on time? I can't stress it enough. It is one of the biggest indicators and from an underwriting perspective, you know, it doesn't matter if you make half a million dollars a year. If my underwriter looks at your credit report and every single month you're late, that doesn't make us feel good because it tells us you don't know how to manage money, which makes us worried you're not going to be able to pay your mortgage. So paying on time is critical. And also like I've had circumstances where people may have missed a payment or the payment's late. And the big question that we always ask next is why? Why did you miss that payment? And if you say, oh, well, I just forgot. Okay, well, how did you resolve the fact that you forgot? If you're like, well, I forgot, so I made sure I put myself on auto pay, it will never happen again. Okay, great. If you say, well, we wanted to go to a vacation, so we couldn't really afford to pay it that month, but we paid it the next month. No, 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 no. So you need to think about all of these late payments as an underwriter asking why. Now look, sometimes people go, oh God, I have late payments, I can't buy a house. No, we just need a good reason why. You know, if your payments were late, let's say in 2020 for a couple months because of COVID and you didn't get the assistance quick enough, that's a good reason. If your score's fine and the computer likes you and that's your reason for the lates, great, that's fine. You know, what we're looking for is are you responsible? Okay, are you responsible? Now, and generally, we're not necessarily gonna ask about late payments unless the computer's calling it out or if it's within the last 12 months. That's when I generally see underwriters asking about why was that payment late, okay? Now, the other thing to keep in mind with late payments, and I've done videos on this before, guys, if you get a bill from something, pay it. If you think it's wrong, pay it and then argue it. And I know that you guys are like, oh, my money, you're wasting my money, Jennifer, trust. But here's the thing, I have sat in this chair long enough to see people destroy their credit over the stupidest stuff. And it's like, well, I didn't wanna pay that $20. Okay, you should have just paid it and then fought with them. Because if you had paid it, right, we wouldn't have 50 lates. And then if you fought them and you won, you would get your money back and your credit wouldn't be destroyed. But if you didn't pay it and then you fought them, the odds of them removing those lates are zero. And a lot of times, you know, people don't understand when they need to actually pay stuff, which I know sounds crazy, but like I cross it all the time. Here's the thing, if you're, let's say you have a credit card and it has a $500 balance and you're like, I'm paying it off. Do not write that check for $500. You write that check for $550. Yeah, write it for more. And the reason is, is that interest is accruing from the time that bill is put together to when your payment gets there. So if it says you owe $500 and you pay $500, that's really not all you owe because there's that chunk of interest. So if you're trying to pay something off, always pay over what the balance says. Okay. Cannot stress that enough. I've seen so many people throw away bills because it's a dollar 50 cents. They think they're joking and their credit gets destroyed and you have no recourse because it's hundred percent your fault. I know it's horrible. Okay. So no late payments. Let's stay away from those. If we have a late payment, let's either a solve the problem. If it was you forgetting or B B a good reason. Okay. Okay. Next, um, debt utilization, debt utilization is really, really important. Um, and it depends on how much debt you have. So you can actually have a situation where someone makes half a million dollars a year, they have three credit cards, they pay them off every single month, but their credit's low. And you're like, whoa, what's going on? Well, my guess would be, it's one of those situations where let's say they have a Target card, a Macy's card, and a Kohl's card, and they all have very low limits. So whenever they use the card, it looks like they're maxing it out. Yes, another, another way this hits is with American Express. So with American Express, they don't, a lot of the cards don't have limits, but the way the credit bureaus read the limits are, it doesn't go, oh, no limit. It goes, shoot, I gotta figure out what the utilization is of available. What's the most they've ever charged on this card? So if you charge $7,000 on that card every single month, and when I pull your credit, you're at $7,000, it looks like you're maxing out your card. You know, and that's another thing with people who, you know, and I'm one of them. So 
I use my credit cards for everything. I use it for the security feature, you know, and that's something important to note. If you're using your debit card for everything, you are putting yourself in harm's way. And even though your bank will protect you to some limit, like here's the thing, let's say you have $10,000 in your bank account, hacker gets in, wipes you out. How are you paying your mortgage while you, your bank works it out? It's usually not 24 hours. So then you've got this whole host of trickle horrible things. Whereas if you had put that same charge, let's say it's a $2 eBay charge on your credit card, you know, they would be dealing with that. You could still pay your mortgage. So please guys, like, your debit card should be locked in a, in like a safe. Seriously, I would not use it in a million years, maybe to take out cash, but that's it. Um, so there's a lot of people that do use their credit cards for that reason. Also for points. We all love points. Don't you? I like free stuff. Do you like free stuff? I love free stuff. And if you pay off your credit card every month, it's free to me, uh, not to the vendors who have to pay the fees anyways. So when I'm buying a house, since I'm one of those people, I pay off my credit card every single week before I have them run my credit. So for instance, I was actually looking at a house and I was like, I wouldn't let the lender pull my credit. I can't do my own loan. I know it's a good thing you're not supposed to, but anyways, I, I wouldn't let them pull it. I'm like, no, you gotta wait till the second. And they're like, why? And I'm like, well, because you know, I wanna make sure everything's paid off so it's super clean. Right now, if you pulled it, you know, it's gonna take days to report because when a lender pulls your credit, it's not instant to that minute. And it doesn't, the whole paying it off every month reflects, but not in the way you'd expect. So if for instance, let's say you have a $10,000 Capital One card and you spend 7,000 a month on it because maybe your rent's on it too and you pay it off at the end of the month, well, if I pull credit and that hasn't reflected of being paid off yet, it's gonna look like you're maxing out your credit. Your score is gonna be a lot lower. I've done it with myself where I haven't you know, done the whole paying it off every week thing and my credit score, it literally can be 100 points different hundred points different. It's a big deal. Um, debt utilization is huge. And sometimes people are like, I don't know, you know, why you're saying I can't get a mortgage. I pay my bills on time all the time. And it's like, your every single credit card you have is at the limit. Like that scares underwriters for sure. And then if you're in a situation, let's say your payment's going from 1000 to $2,000 a month, which is a huge jump. And they look at your credit report and you've got nine credit cards all at their limit you look maxed out. How are you going to get to that 2000? So you really want to think about that and a general credit card rule guys, like just don't buy it. If you can't pay it off the same month, I know that sounds so easy and I know how hard it is. Like it took me years of discipline to get to the point where I was like, if I can't pay it off, I can't buy it. But you really need that mindset because credit cards are a trap. You know, if you watch Dave Ramsey or anyone else, they are the devil. Credit cards are the devil unless you know how to handle the devil, which is you don't let them win. So taking out debt when you can't afford to pay it off is a terrible idea. So that's another one. And then the third one, so we covered payments, utilization, inquiries, and lines of new credit and closing accounts. All of that comes into play. So if I was going to buy a house and I knew six months, a year in advance, I would not open up any new lines of credit. A lot of people think, well, if I get another credit card, then my score should go up. There's very few circumstances where that is true. Um, I see where people get new credit cards and it causes more trouble. I've actually had it where people have good credit scores, like 700 plus, and um, they've opened up like three new credit cards in a couple months. I can't get the computer to accept it. No, because it's seen as too much risk. And sometimes what we'll see is we'll see someone gets a raise, they buy a new car, they open a couple of new credit cards, then you come to get the mortgage and we're running it through desktop underwriting and it's going, whoa, no, because it's seen this huge spike in available credit. So you wanna be really mindful of that. Um, increase, just don't let anyone pull your credit. Personally, my credit's always frozen, um, except for when I unfreeze it for specific things. It's a really good safeguard. Like. I've been at that furniture store where they're offering you 10% if you get a credit card and you're like, oh, you're doing the math and you're like, this makes sense. It doesn't make sense. Don't do it. Just don't do it. You know, if you're like, God, I just really like opening credit cards, please freeze your credit. It does take at least 10 minutes to unfreeze it and that will make you 
really evaluate the decision you're about to make. And having little safeguards like that can be great. Now, another mistake people make is they close all their accounts or they go, I'm just not gonna use credit, I'm gonna close it, I'll keep one credit card open but I'm never gonna use it. Well, we've had a couple clients recently where their credit was great and then they, they didn't use their credit card for six months and their score went to zero. Yeah zero. Now with certain loans, we still have programs where we can work with no credit scores, but it's not like you can go back in that time machine and get back to that 760 and a zero credit score loan is going to be more expensive in rate than if you're at a 700, uh, really any other score would be higher than zero. So you really want to be mindful that you don't go overkill. Okay. So if it's me and I'm applying for a loan, I am not gonna open any new cards. I am not gonna close any cards. If this is a purchase out, I am not gonna buy a car in a million years. I am not gonna refinance a car. Cause some people go, well, I'm refinancing a car, so I'm actually lowering my debt. Right, but you're also getting increase. Yeah, you're getting increase. So you really need to be mindful of those three pieces. Now, if you guys have questions or comments, as always, reach out. I am licensed in 48 states to do mortgages. I am happy to help you guys whenever I can. So is my team. But those are the three big things on credit. I know there's some great YouTube channels, some great Reddit forms where they really analyze it, you know, within an inch of its life. And I commend everyone who does that. I think it's great. I learn so much from you guys. But bottom line for, you know, anyone who doesn't want to go that deep, pay your bills on time, keep your balances low or pay them off consistently and don't open or close new credit. Okay. As always, thanks for watching guys. Anytime you need anything, I'm here for you.